welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 41st episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we are going to talk about letting go and holding on. What do you let go of and what should you hold on no matter where your life is taking you? I'm going to share with you today 12 things to let go of and six things to hold on to. And as we go through this list, be considering why there are 12, and I could probably add many, many more items to this list, and why there are only six on the list of things to hold on to. So just keep that in the back of your mind. We'll visit that at the end of today's episode. And be sure to tune in to the end of today's episode as I'll share one of my latest beauty product discoveries. I'm loving it. And after a couple of weeks of using it, making sure indeed it's doing what I thought it would do, I want to share it with you. So stay tuned. We'll talk about that here at the end of the episode. All right, but let's get back to what today's episode is all about, what to let go of and what to hold on to. I want to start off with a favorite quote of mine from Joseph Campbell. He states, we must be willing to let go of the life we've planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. End quote. Well, the undeniable life truth remains that change is inevitable. Whether we want it to happen or not, it will. Even when we seek out change, fervently pursue it, in fact, letting go of certain aspects of life that we've been living and enjoying, perhaps, can feel as though we are leaving behind our so-called Linus blanket, that comfort, that security blanket. Whether it's the comfort of being accepted into the community that we currently live in, the comfort of the walls we've built up to protect our heart, perhaps, or the comfort of a social calendar that, while it may not be to our taste, it may not allow us to be who we truly are, at least we have one. And letting go of what we have known for what is completely uncertain can cause angst in even the most courageous of people. And today, I'm going to talk about certain things that we need to let go of if we want to live a fulfilling life. It may not be easy, but it will be well worth it. At the beginning of 2005, the first post of the year, in fact, focused on the premise of getting back to simple. As Einstein reminds us, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Part of striking the right balance is letting go of the unnecessary, which in turn evokes change in our lives on our own terms for the purpose of improving the overall quality of our life. And in the same vein, knowing what to always hang on to, those foundational components will give our lives the sound structure and direction that will bring fulfillment. So let's get started. The 12 things that we need to let go of. Number one, others' opinions. It has been my experience that when I am unsure of myself or my abilities or the path I've chosen or currently am on, I will often seek out more approval from others than I would typically if I was sure of where I was going, I was confident in my abilities. And so I guess the lesson there is that we need to take the time to get to know ourselves, to hone our strengths. And when we do that, we will begin then to approve of ourselves. And once we have our own approval, It doesn't matter what other people think. We're stronger and more certain, and those opinions just tend to slide off our back that much easier. It's almost as if our confidence, our life experience, our assurity is the oil that we need to put on our backs to get those opinions to slide and get on and move away from us so we can move on forward. In last week's episode, episode number 40, I share in depth about the importance of seeking our own approval. And I'll provide a link to that episode, podcast 40, on today's show notes if you would like to pursue this particular issue in more depth. So number one is let go of others' opinions. Number two, the number of likes. And we're talking social media here, the number of likes. We need to let go of caring about the number of likes we get on an Instagram image or a Facebook post. Our social media accounts are fantastic mechanisms for connecting and for sharing information. But similar to number one, if our value or confidence depends on outside approval, we need to begin doing more work on 
us on the inside. For example, our mental strength, our self-acceptance, and our self-knowledge. So number two, let go of the number of likes. Number three, let go of worrying or caring about how big your house is. Many people believe that they need a large house because they have many people for whom they will have to house or they have an immense amount of stuff. The fact of the matter is Americans have lived in far smaller homes in the past with just as many people and often more. Two years ago, in fact, on the blog, I wrote a post asking the question, why not live in a smaller house? And the discussion was fantastic. There are so many amazing reasons. Some you would expect, like saving money and less to clean, but there are others that you may not. The benefits of living in a small house. I'll provide a link on today's show notes so you can check it out. So number three is let go of the size of your house. Number four, societal expectations that shrink who you are and what you could be. One of the main components of living a simply luxurious life is letting go of what society dictates as the right path. But I wanted to bring it up again here because it really is something we need to let go of and it really is not easy and I respect and understand that. I have in the past and am currently dealing with certain things as well that I'm like, okay, I've got to let this go. I've got to, I've got to move on from this and not worry about whether I'm following the path that people approve of or not. And it gets easier. It definitely gets easier as I become more assured and you become more assured of the path that you're taking. And we then gravitate to people who are more accepting of that authenticity and they too may be choosing their own path and have have found that courage to do so. So many people do want to do this. They want to let go of the societal expectations and blossom basically into who they really could be. But very few people choose to find the courage to walk to the beat of their own drum when they realize to do otherwise would diminish who they are and what they have to offer. All I can say is be brave. Be brave because it is going to take a lot of courage. But, and the reason I said you have to choose to find the courage is because we all have it inside of us. We all have courage if we choose to tap into it. It, like most anything else, is a muscle and we must exercise it and it gets easier with each use. But we are each capable of discovering the courage within us because it it really is there waiting to be exercised. And I want to leave you with a quote here for this particular point from Raymond Lindquist. And he says, courage is the power to let go of the familiar. Short, but true. So number four, let go of societal expectations that shrink or require you to be something you're not. Number five, let go of that busy schedule. This is the biggest relief in the world to know (laughs) that you don't have to go around chaotically scurrying and stressed out from one point to the next to get things done. I've never really found that I thought I had to do this, but there have been times in my life where it was more regular than not that I was busy and I realized I was more frazzled. I was more stressed. I wasn't making the best decisions. Or even if I was, I wasn't able to physically be my best in each moment. Inevitably though, there are times when our lives become harried because a confluence occurs of all of our life's priorities happening all at the same time. But allowing this to be an everyday occurrence is not a good idea. And if we are allowing it, meaning we're not trying to reform it or tweak it or change it, then that speaks more of us and our desire to fill a void that we don't want to address. Quality over quantity. A less demanding schedule will always provide better results. We'll be able to savor things more readily. We'll be able to do our best work. And we'll be able to enjoy it more. I guess that goes along with savoring it, doesn't it? But It's worth repeating. I include on today's show notes a post about the need to let go of busy. We go much more in depth than that. So if you'd like to take a look at that, that will be on today's show notes. So number five, let go of the busy schedule. Number six is let go of named clothing. Now here on the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, I am regularly sharing designer items, top quality items that will be wonderful additions to a capsule wardrobe. But the key is you're not going to buy a ton of them, number one. Number two, you're not buying them for the label. You're not buying them for the brand. For example, I only buy Diane von Furstenberg clothing because I truly love it. I have found it to be top quality, but I usually have to wait for a sale before I buy it. But just as importantly, it aligns with my signature style. Quality, chic, 
in casual attire. However, to buy a pair of heels for the iconic red sole or a handbag for the entwined seas so everyone can see that you own it or wear it is to reveal more of your dependence on the approval of others. And that's just not necessary. I will admit readily that in the past, I have made that mistake, making the assumption that just because there's a certain brand designer behind it, it must be amazing. And while that's the case for a lot of things that I've currently purchased, there are a few brands that I've realized, okay, that's not top quality and I will no longer be buying that brand and I no longer recommend it on the blog. So I'm not going to share any of those names, but just note that anything I do recommend is because I've found it to be top quality and worth the investment because the key with investing is that it will last and it will be a classic item that will always be timeless in your wardrobe. So number six, let go of brand name clothing. Number seven, fake food. Leave it on the grocery shelf. Not only will your waistline thank you, but your long-term physical health and especially your mind will thank you. In today's show notes, I provide a post that goes into great detail about the food that you should hang on to and indulge in and the food to let go of. So be sure to check that out at the show notes, podcast 41. So number seven, let go of fake food. Number eight is let go of comparing your social calendar with others. If you are indeed secure and loving the life you are living, To hear that a good friend of yours is going to roam around the world should be exciting, celebratory news. You can't wait to hear about her trip when she returns. On the flip side, to have a friend or friends who are secure in their own lives enough to be excited for your adventures when you get to discuss them are friendships you indeed want to nurture. So be sure to travel or not to travel, go out or not go out for the right reasons. Number eight, stop comparing those social calendars. And number nine, let go of the latest tech upgrades. Everyone's life will require certain tech capabilities and some people will need to get the latest upgrade or they will need to have a reliable phone at all times that can do certain things. But to let go of the need to be seen with the latest release of the iPhone or Samsung Galaxy or whatever else is out there is to show an insecurity about yourself, is to spend money that you don't need to spend Use that money, use that money to do other enjoyable pursuits or make investments in your dreams. It'll be far more worth it. Granted, we probably all will have to upgrade at some point. And uh, it's just the way the world works for the most part for most of us. But, but make sure you upgrade for the right reasons and when you truly need it, when you truly need it. So number nine, let go of the need to have the latest tech upgrades. All right, we have three more items to let go of, and I want to dive into those. But before I do, I want to take a quick one minute intermission, and I will see you on the other side. Welcome back. We have three more things to let go of. Good riddance, right? And we're going to get right back into it. So number 10 is let go of worrying or caring about where someone gained their education, whether a public college or a prestigious Ivy League institution or a trade school in proximity to where you grew up, where someone chose or was financially able to advance their training of the career they wish to pursue shouldn't matter in the least. It is one's willingness to learn their ability to grow and apply successfully their knowledge along with their passion and worth ethic that should catch our attention. So look not at the place of degree, 
but rather to someone's expertise and passionate pursuit. Number 10, stop caring about where someone got their education. Number 11, your mode of transportation. Perhaps this idea of having a car, owning a car, trying to keep up with the Joneses with your particular car is a bigger issue out here on the West Coast where there is more distance and less public transportation. But the only reason one should pay attention to their choice of transportation is to ensure that they have functionality and safety at their disposal. Beyond that, save your money and don't forget to change your oil regularly if your mode of transportation is a car. So number 11, let go of caring about someone's mode of transportation. Number 12, let go of past mistakes. We each leave behind a textbook of sorts full of lessons, life lessons, that we have had the opportunity to learn as we move forward. But learning from them and dwelling on them are two entirely different things. When we revert to dwelling, we are longing for a chance to rewrite history, a chance we undoubtedly know that we will never get. Rather, when we choose to learn from history, our history, we are accepting our past, remembering we are human, and then choosing to move forward with more knowledge. And that's a great thing. So it's, it's never, it's never something to hold our head about, our mistakes that we made in the past. They truly were lessons, treasures, gifts that we can use in the future to improve the quality of our lives. So that wraps up the 12 items that we should try to start eliminating from our lives. But just as there are clear things to let go of, there are specific items to hold on to with absolute resolution. Number one, curiosity. To remain curious, as Diane Sawyer reminds us, is to never grow old. For there will always be something new to learn and will serve as a fire that we never want to extinguish. Number two, books, information. Whether a book that is checked out from the library or a news article that is read online on your Feedly feed, voluntarily choosing to be well-read and in the know is something to never stop doing. I will share with you a post that I wrote a few years ago about the benefits of staying abreast of current affairs and also a post to discuss the many benefits of reading beyond the obvious. Number one, number two, I've just been covered. Curiosity and books, hang on to them ferociously. Number three, authenticity. You have something to offer the world that no one else has. Take the time to discover it, have the courage to cultivate it, and pursue it without apology. Your life and legacy will be more fulfilling as a result. Number four, your unique path. People often scoff, question, or try to thwart ideas that they don't understand or due to their experience couldn't imagine for themselves. As humans, we consciously view the world from our limited perspective. Knowing this should lift the burden as you pursue and cultivate the life you have imagined. Do it. Do it and be thankful in retrospect that you chose. Maybe not the easiest path, but the most rewarding and beneficial to cultivating your best self. Number five, never let go of gratitude. Being thankful for what is going well in your life keeps the positive energy flowing through each of our days. It motivates us to be more positive by default, and it is a magnet for more experiences and people to be thankful for. Often too, when we spend our time being thankful for what we do have, we don't have time to pursue so often what we don't need, which as a byproduct eliminates unnecessary stress as well. And last but not least, never let go of hope. Never lose the fuel that will carry you right up to that moment you weren't sure would ever happen. Without question, without question, life, if lived consciously, isn't always easy. It's not going to always be easy, but there are many ways we make it harder than it needs to be. Havelock Ellis states, all the art of living lies in a fine mingling of letting go and holding on, end quote. Strip the unnecessary and revel in the beautiful. While yes, quite simple, it requires conscious effort on our part. The key is to recognize what supports us as we courageously choose to be authentically who we are and have the capability of becoming and what aligns with our life priorities. Everything else is just filler. Even in choosing what to hold on to and what to let go of, 
Notice which list is longer. Quality over quantity prevails again. All right. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you would like the show notes of any of the links we discussed or to print the transcript, you can go to the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 41. Now, stay tuned for this week's Petit Plaisir, where I'll share my latest beauty find that I highly recommend. I'll be right back. All right, this week's Petit Plaisir is a product from a company that I already love. It's from Eminence, and I've talked about in previous episodes of this podcast, the different products that I use. I'll include a link to that particular podcast so you can take a look at those. But today's beauty item is their facial recovery oil. I was skeptical at first. Let me begin by saying that. I was skeptical at first because for so long, we've been told that oil's bad for skin. We just never want to hear the word oil. It's supposed to be bad. It's supposed to be getting rid of it, right? Well, (laughs) things are changing in the beauty industry. You've no doubt probably seen if you pick up any fashion magazine or lifestyle magazine that there are oodles of facial serums or oils to enhance our tone of our skin, the elasticity, to reduce lines, and to hydrate. And this is one that I highly recommend. So my esthetician, who I've been going to for years, suggested I try facial recovery oil. Now, I live in a drier climate. And I am realizing that part of my issue, if ever I have a breakout, is mainly because it's my skin is not hydrated enough. Funny, you expect that, okay, I lather it with oil or, or excuse me, I lather it with moisturizer every night and every morning and still not enough, but it's true. So what I've been doing every night is using one drop, just a little bit smaller than a dime, of oil on my face before I put my nightly moisturizer on. In fact, Eminence recommends this this order of putting on your beauty regimen because when you put that oil on first, it helps the skin to absorb that moisturizer even more. So I'm always curious. So what's in this oil? What makes it so wonderful? <laughs> and, and just to give you a list, a rundown, and, and also an idea of what each of these oils do, we have four. We have the clary sage oil, which is simply calming, but more importantly, it balances the oil production of our skin. Then you have basic olive oil, olive oil, deeply hydrating, and it helps again to calm the skin and soothe it. Then you have sage leaf extract. Now this is an antioxidant and it tones and rejuvenates the skin. And lastly, the fun one to say, ylang ylang. (laughs) I love saying that, but it acts as a cleanser, is calming as well and brings balance to our skin. A few other benefits are it helps prevent dry cuticles. It can help diminish stretch marks and surgical scars, helps to prevent chapped lips, reduces the signs of aging on the neck. Now make sure you use this on your decolletage area as well as your face each night. I highly recommend doing that. It also reduces puffiness and gets rid of that red or uneven skin tone that you may have on your cheeks or anywhere else. Lastly, if you're wanting to prevent ingrown hairs in your eyebrow region, this is the product for you. The thing about this product is it is a little pricey, but it will last for at least four months. I've had it for three weeks now going on four weeks, so a month, and you wouldn't even know I've used this bottle because you just, like I said, use a drop, very, very little. So I could easily see myself getting to four months, probably six months. So it is an investment, but I I highly recommend it. Now, what have I noticed in my skin? This is probably the most important answer I should give. Like I said, I've been using it once a day. Some people use it twice. It's really up to you. I use it once a day. And what I have noticed is fewer breakouts, if any, because it's evidently balancing the skin. The unnecessary bacteria isn't building up and causing it to break out. I am noticing softer skin to the touch. It is a fantastic feeling. Now, since I have only been using it for three weeks, I haven't noticed a tremendous change in fewer wrinkles or anything. But then again, that's at this point in my life is not what I'm trying to get rid of. I'm trying to be more preventative in that area. So perhaps, um, depending on where you are, um, in your beauty regimen, that could be something you could report back on with regards to your reviews. But for me, it's been helpful with regards to clearer skin and also with softer skin. So if you're trying to figure out an oil, 
to use to add to your regular beauty regimen, I highly recommend Eminence's Facial Recovery Oil. And there are tons of them out there though. And I was I went online just to kind of see what other ones were recommended. I swear every single list I went on had a different top five. <laughs> There's just so many. There isn't a resounding, this one works the best. So feel free to experiment, ask your esthetician, ask your friends that use these. My choice right now, what I'm loving is Eminence's facial recovery oil. And I'll provide a link to it on today's show notes, as well as a link to the products. And you can kind of get a rundown of how it works. It's very simple though. Very simple and seemingly contradictory, but it does indeed work for beautiful skin. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe to offer insight into how to live simply luxuriously. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.